All right, recording. You're going to have a couple of examples here. First, you might have something written carbon 12, and then we'll write carbon 13. Yeah, right. These are examples. You want to write this. Now, carbon 12, here's what this means. This is telling you you have carbon and you have an isotope of carbon basically with a mass number of 12. So, first thing I want you to do, go on to your periodic table and figure out what the atomic number of carbon is. And well, since we're recording, don't one. yell it out. No, no, just figure it out, look at it, find it. Now, you should be able to find on your periodic table that the atomic number of carbon is what? Six. Six, very good. I was looking for other period for periodic table. Yeah, sure. Now, all right. Now you can see it's got a six. Now, do you also see that it's got a twelve point oh one on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. That is its atomic mass, but that's not what we're concerned with right now. I, I just wanted to show you that it's not what we're concerned with. So we know that the atomic number of carbon twelve, remember, represented by z, is equal to six. Now. The way we're going to write out our isotope notation, remember our chemical symbol for carbon is just simply capital C. Then if you think back to our formula, remember the atomic number goes on the bottom, then the mass number, and in this case the mass number is 12, goes on the top. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now. The mass number in something like this, this is it right here, okay? This is how you're going to find it. However, let's say, uh, well, first though, before we do anything, how many neutrons does this have? Anybody have a, have a legitimate guess that they can explain? No. Raise your hand if you do. Yes. No, you're right. Good job. So the mass is the mass is 12. The mass number is 12. This is the key. This is what you have to do today. So pay attention. The mass number is 12. Now, if you remember, the mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons. So if you're doing protons plus neutrons, and you know the mass number is 12, and you know you have six protons. That's how you're going to find out neutrons. Does that make sense to people? Does anybody have any questions on that? So yeah, you can tell it's six. And this is what you're going to have to do. I'm going to be giving you a number of protons or neutrons, and I'm going to say figure it out. Yeah. So I'm going to show you next. So if the mass number in this case was 12, you've got a new carbon. Okay. Now. Does the atomic number for carbon change? No. no, it's still six. You don't even need to think about that. It's still six. But the mass number has changed. So now it's 13 instead. That's it. That makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. That's it. Like I said, this is not really that challenging as long as you keep everything that you're doing straight. Can you make them a harder one? It's kind of hard to make them. It's more difficult. Now, question. Gosh. Yeah. Now, the atomic number is 6. It's the number of protons. Okay? Always. For carbon, it's always 6, no matter what isotope it is. Bottom number is always the mass number. Or, pardon me, the atomic number, which is protons, yeah. That never. This number, every time you write a C, that number will never change. If you wrote a different element, like let's say we had, let's say we had nitrogen. You'd put a 7 down there because nitrogen's atomic number is 7. Okay? But if you were to ever write a carbon, 
it's always going to be six right there because that is the atomic number. It's, that's what it is. It never changes. Okay, and uh, like you see how, like, how it's 12 and 15, is that like how many carbons? Are that's how many. That is dependent on how many neutrons. Because you see here how the, the neutrons for this carbon is six? Well, if you want to figure out the number of neutrons in this case, for this one, it's going to be, again, yeah, it's going to be seven. So do you see how that changes based on, based on this? Yeah. We'll do we'll do another example. All right. What? So you just do subtraction yeah. for that, and then we're going to be able to use the periodic table, so we don't have to memorize all this. No, you will. Yeah. By the way, you will never ever have to remember the periodic table. I don't know if I ever told you this. Yeah. I will always give you one on a test. Uh, always. So don't ever worry about that. All right, let's say, uh, let's do another example. Let's say you have uh, chlorine. You're going to have to do this whole thing. You have chlorine and you have uh, 15 neutrons. From that, you can write out the entire isotope notation for this chlorine. You can write it out. Try it. Right now, try it. He's, he's, he's right, right there. there. He's just hiding. Who's it for? Ollie. I'm still recording. Well, yeah, I'm just going to put the whole thing up. Shh. Remember, we're recording, so try to avoid saying anything too goofy. It's on, on this thing, so it records whatever goes down here. So it's handy. So if you get confused on this, you go back and you watch. I usually trust this hour to be quiet, but today, not so much. What? Good question. Now, first question, what you do? You need to figure out the atomic symbol. So you find chlorine, it's Cl. So you write out Cl. See you, buddy. Now, the next thing you can find out from the periodic table is the atomic number, 17. So you write 17 down there. Does that make, yes? Okay. Now, the last thing you have to remember on the top, you're going to be writing your mass number, and remember that mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons. If you have uh, 17 protons plus 15 neutrons, your mass number is what? 32. 32, so you write 32 up there, and then you're done. This is the isotope notation.